Hi, I'm Rob Hudson with salesing.com. Uh, we're going to go through a series of videos and diagrams to show you how to assemble a Melgus 15. And uh, part, some of the videos were done in conjunction with sale22.com, which is Ed Furry's uh, dealership. He's a Melgus dealer as well as other, other types of boats, and I bought my Melgus 15 through him. And so he was gracious enough to come on down to Sarasota, Florida. I'm at the Sarasota Sailing Squadron, and uh, he helped me to walk through not only how some of the parts that he would assemble, but also some of the upgrades that, uh, that he sells through Sail 22. Here we go. So this is uh, kind of stock how you're going to get your boat. Um, this is your GNAV tube, your boom, your bowsprit. Uh, some bowsprits come in the boat, some don't. Uh, your mast, which is two pieces, so all the halyards already run, so that's easy. Your spreaders, one thing that's cool about the spreaders is you see you have a red and a green, so you know port and starboard, um, so you're all good with that. Um, dagger board and your, your rudder tiller. Um, you'll see a, a stock aluminum tiller extension, and then this is our rooster upgrade. Um, some people are cutting both of them. Um, kind of a suggested length is um, about four to four to four or so inches shorter. Um, so one thing you also is pretty cool about this, these while we look at them is you just pull the pin like that and you can make adjustments to your rig. Uh, pretty much everyone's setting them with the same thing right now and we'll do that to show what, what the recommended is, but that super simple to be able to do that. You just pull the pin and then you put the pin in and then you're set. So that's pretty cool. Um, they've done a nice job of that. And you have pin options, but same type of thing. But what this is nice about is, is you can pull the shrouds off the, the spreaders really easily by just pulling a pin. So super clever from Selden. It's pretty neat. Um, so that's that. We'll go over more rig stuff as we get a rig up. Um, simple bow painter, class rule. It's a floating bow painter. Um, the, the sock for the kite. Um, it's nice. It has a, has a little slot there that you put your halyards in when you're sailing. You can put other stuff in there as well, so that's kind of nice. Um, you can see in here there's um, some lines here. Your main halyard and your jib halyard are going to be just like this. Uh, they have a tail at the bottom, so you'll do a two to one, but they're nice dynema. The um, spin halyard is a, is a piece of uh, polyester cover, polyester. Um, it's okay. Um, we like to upgrade it mostly because we go down a size and then we have better end fittings. Um, so that's good. And then uh, we'll show you this later when we do the, when we change the shivs. But these little blue things pop out and they're pretty cool. So they've done some pretty cool things with the rigs um, for sure. Um, this is your boat breaker. And for people not in scow world, they, they don't normally understand this um, until they see it working. And we'll show that, but the 49er uses it as well. That's so you don't have to um, spin off your rig to take the mast down. And you can also relieve the pressure too if you want to. Um, here's our upgraded spin halyard. We've tapered it, make it lighter, put a dog bone on it, put a little disc on it. That way it doesn't rub against the mast. It also helps if you would have a twist. Um, we do bright green, bright pink and orange. So we have a lot of, a lot of um, options for colors, but we, we like bright for spin halyards. Spin halyards also your retrieval line. Um, so it goes all the way through through the boat, through the sock. Um, main, sh main sheet, we taper it. Uh, we use a uh, Robline Copa 5000. It's a, um, a little bit grippy and has a Dyneema core, which is nice. Um, jib sheets, uh, we do a, a polyester cover with a Dyneema core. Um, we played around a little bit with Polytech, but it's such a small boat, it's not as necessary. Uh, spin sheets, both these are tapered and these are tapered. Um, spin sheets have a, 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 a pigtail on it, so it clears the force day a lot easier. Um, but these would be your options that come with the boat. Similar main sheet, but polyester core, not tapered. Um, polyester core without with a polyester cover for your spin sheets and jib sheets as well, and you have to tie knots. The knots become an issue with um, tat, with um, jibing the spinnaker. And then uh, on the, with attaching the, the sheets to the, to the cars. Um, Blockwise, Ratchematic Seldons um, come with the boat, and they come for the spin and the jib. Um, a lot of people like to upgrade with, 
to the Harkins that you saw the shackle on, so you don't have to worry about a shackle pin coming out. Um, or you can go to ratchet ones that switch on and off, as some people like. Um, similar thing, a um, little more secure with how they're attached. Um, these are your um, clue box for your jib, so they're fine the way they are. And then uh, this is for the system for your pole going out. Um, so that's a big ring there. And then this is our traveler upgrade. What we did in there is we just got with a much bigger block, not bigger, but more a stronger block. It's a better attachment so you can't pull sideways on the actual block. And uh, okay, now moving on to um, some of the upgrades. Um, the first thing that we have real quick before that, we have the lifting bridle, stock one for Malgus, which is just free stretch with, um, with carabiners. And then we use a Dyneema just we kind of feel like it's a little stronger, uh, splices are a little stronger, they can't come out. And then we do two different colors. Um, so your back one is a different color than your front. And you'll see multiple different options. We This one's pink and then red and gray. We have blue and we just kind of grab a bunch of different colors make sure we're different. Um, so you, when you're getting untangled. Windex, um, there are a couple Windex options. Some people, I would say about 25% of the fleet goes with the Windex. Um, and that's mostly what you're gonna be interested in. Um, here we're going to go shivs. Right now we're out of stock of the spinnaker shiv, but this is the main and jib shiv. The spinnaker shiv is going to look the same but smaller, and those are good because the stock ones are plastic. These are aluminum with stainless steel bearings. They're going to last a lot longer and they're going to roll better. The stock ones can get a little worn from the side. So this is our system for tuning the rig. Um, scar pins will hold the rig in place. So once you uh, put those on, you can't spin the rig. You only have to put them on the top because the bottom is attached. We have the star grips. They go onto the turnbuckle barrel, so you can grab and turn very easily. And then this is what they call a handle from Ron Stan. Um, that goes on the wire, so you can hold the wire because you don't want the wire spinning um, even by accident because you can unwind it and that type of thing. So this whole system together is what we would use to tune the rig. No tools. Um, I originally said hands-free, but you're gonna need your hands. Um, so that's, that's a kind of cool system that we like um, and then up here we have, um, these are the plugs for the, um, for, you know, the, the different places in the boat. So you can drain water out of the backbone or the sides. And so these have a, a little bearing in them. And so they stay closed, but when there's water forcing behind them, they'll, they'll self-drain. So they're self-draining plugs that go right into your stock ones. Um, your stock um, shrouds. So this may look a little funkier than normal because this is Diform or Compact Strand. Diform was a brand. Um, contact Pack Strand, so it's kind of a pre-stretched wire. Uh, it's really nice. Um, quarter inch is the size, so you'll see the turnbuckle barrels here. And then the Force A is just standard uh, one by 19, pretty normal, with the T fittings for the top. And then the, there's the little ball right there, and that's how you hook up the um, you hook up the um, boat breaker there. And the four stay is fixed, fixed length, which will be good long term because you won't have to worry about, you know, changing sail designs, things like that that you're not allowed to do. You're not worried. And then the tuning rig used uh, the loose PT1. All the gauges are, all the numbers and tuning guides are based off the PT1. And when you measure your tension, you actually measure the four stay. And that gets you into the, the zone and then you shouldn't need anything after that. So. It's nice to have to be able to make your changes and see if you missed a turn or that type of thing, getting it back to where you started. But that's um, nice PT1. We do bronze fittings for these because these can wear out, the Dowron's can wear out. So you can upgrade to bronze, but um, that's pretty much all, all the basic stuff on the Malgus 15 to get you going and get you upgraded from the beginning. Uh, once we get the boat rigged, there's a couple little small things we can show you that we do as well. Um, but for the most part, minimal upgrades needed for these. Malgus 15s. So to put the star grips and the handles and everything on, um, you know, it comes like this. So it's tight and spun and I just take pliers. You won't use these um, cotter pins anymore. So I just um, spin them and pop them out. And then uh, you're good to go. There, and then you can unwind that. Uh, this one I did uh, almost unwind all the way, so we can unwind it. 
and if you hold it, you can get them both off. So when you unwind it and it's apart, then this piece, this is why you have to take it all the way off. Um, I actually like to put it this direction because then you have four going on to the flat part. You'll see there's a flat part here and that's what you're gonna capture. And then the rest of them are just centering it. So you just basically take the um, Allen key that's provided and I normally make sure I get it on the flat here. And these grub screws don't come on, they come in a pack. So you do have to tee those up ahead of time. Um, so like you said, you're, you're lining up those set screws with the flat. Yep. And the yep, so if you line up these ones first, you can then get it kind of tight and then the other ones are just centering. Um, and these are really meant for a 5 16 there's nothing wrong with using them for this, but there's just a lot of space. Um, so, so, anyways, that's how it goes on. And then the star grip has just two fasteners with a Phillips head. So, um, that doesn't come with it, but it's a Phillips, so you should have that in your kit so it comes off and then uh, this just goes on like this and then you just tighten it and it'll move a little bit um, if for some reason you get one and it, it's maybe not quite tight enough what you can do is um, literally sand the inside on even just one of them and it would go tight but um, we should be, even if it goes up and down, like moves a little bit, not really a big deal because you can see how close it is. Right. Um, you see there it's only, one's tight, it's pretty tight, so shouldn't be a problem. We've only had like one or two sets that we've, we've used that you need to sand just a little bit. So then that's good. And, and then the, the markers, we put a marker on here for two reasons. I know you're, you're starboard and port if you take the rig apart, but two, it helps you count your turns and if you're half a turn off. So once that's on, then um, you can you know, start to spin it on. And then uh, the, when you put the rig together the first time, we normally keep it pretty loose and make sure you get it nice and So you're backing off, finding the beginning of the thread. Yeah, you gotta find the beginning of the thread. Don't just jam it on there. Um, and then what I do is you can get it on and then look for the hole there and then you even it up. If I'm putting the rig up for the first time, I'm probably just going to go even like this and then stop, put the rig up and then you'll go to your, then you have everything sorted and you, you can get the rig up easily. And then you go um, get it so get it um, up in the boat and then tuned. And this upgrade basically means that you don't have to use a tool. Uh, you can Correct. hand adjust you can hand these. tighten, hand loosen, no problem. Um, then once you're once you're good, you take a scar pin, and the scar scar pin then goes through the top one. The bottom one's captured with the um, the boat. And it goes right through there, and then you wrap it around. So it's basically a pin with Velcro that keeps it in. Exactly, exactly. So then you're good to go. A little trick where you put a piece of webbing here, so that way when you unfold the mast, you know you're not twisted. Uh, it doesn't come that way, but... And then this just slides on. And just make sure you're not pinching anything. And then literally just slides together like that and then you know that's the way it is you can take that off so you can put that on you know you don't put a mark but knowing you're going to need an extra six inches or so to pull it apart and then then you're good to go smart idea and then that way you don't get any of your halyards and running rigging twisted up inside right? yeah exactly so and put your piece of webbing in your boat kit you're good to go. So, um, so we can just go straight this way. A 
and then we can get the spreaders on. Yeah, we found it where we've set it, you know, you just pad this, set on the boat and up front, you can actually, if it's a, you can put it kind of down one side with padding. If you didn't get the full trailer kit and it, you know, you come here, it's not a whole lot different than if you were using the trailer kit, but the trailer kit is very nice and easy. So that's definitely a bonus to be able to use that. So what size did it turn out to be? This is an eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. Okay. 15 model. Yeah. So here's a keyed. So um, what we can do is we can put them on and then adjust them later. So make sure I make sure I go down with the screw. That way, if some reason the nut would fall off. Right, the bolt will stay in bolt will most likely stay in, especially under pressure from the um, rig. And this is where this adjustment thing is super cool because now to tune the rig, I just pull that pin. If I pull this pin here, I can now spin this Do you have a preferred where it needs to go. You, and you're going uh, I'll look in the tuning guide um, the tuning I've guide. I've only done you know one I've only had to do about maybe even five of them and you don't adjust them so I would consider putting a pin in here so you could pull pins instead to pull them out to take the spreaders off if you really were in that mode but right. but I, I don't and currently the only time you would do that would be maybe Long trip. Long trip, yeah. Yeah, because you can take the shrouds off by just pulling this pin. And then their shrouds are completely off and you just have these. We actually made a sleeve to keep the bugs off it, yeah. that we're going to nice. fine tune. So. And then repeat. And then repeat, exactly. Okay, that's okay. This is. This is set. These aren't. You don't move these. There are other holes in here, but you don't use them. Um, you're all the way in, basically. So, from side to side, directly adjacent to your spreader, you should get your rake measurement. Measurement from aft of your mast to the bottom side of the straight edge. The spreaders are preset with 135 millimeters of rake to here. And it was the. So that's. Sorry, three, 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 five. That lip there to the end of the black. Well, it's three, three, five millimeters. That's it right there. Boom. Then just the pins already lined up. I made sure I measured it with the where it could be lined up. And then that was it. So now we just got to do the other side and you know, it's not like it's a question mark where it kind of was. It's yeah. like, boom, right there. So I, so I took a mast. We already tuned to it. Now we're creating an easy way to measure, basically. Exactly. And so you can, repeatability is the key there. So here's a lip here. See that lip? Put, the, you put your tape measure against that, and you measure to the end of the spreader on that back side just so it's nice right there the end of the black end of the black right at the back to make sure it's easy to and you're done so here i'm just going to take this off and put it the other way and then i'll i'm going to start to put the shrouds on the shrouds go to the front there's two slots here and we oh, make okay. sure yeah. we go to the to the front put a fill so then these go in um, it's a key, so they kind of work them in and then you're good, mm -hmm. and that's it. So all of them go that way. And 
then I'm gonna unscrew this. Now the nut is kind of the key there. You gotta stick, it's captured, but what happens is, is when I loosen this, this whole piece can come off. Yeah, it's got a little nut that's captured yeah. inside. So don't unscrew so that nut disappear, like falls off. You don't need to. But I'm then enough to be able to slide it out sideways. It's yep. Still, still uh, connected. To yeah, that. and then I kind of just remember now this needs to get pinned. There's a bigger slot. Look at. Oh, I see. So you rotate. You're going to rotate the bigger slot forward. Bigger slot wants to be forward. So you've put the shroud in there. So we're forward. Make sure that's forward. Slide that in, and then I get it captured before. Before adjusting, and then what I normally do is I kind of just put a little bit of tension. The, the spreader will go up a little bit, but it's going to seat itself. Um, that'll still move. Don't get too crazy to over tighten, and then you're you're in, you're good. Um, and then put the other one in this pin. I'll put. I didn't switch this one yet, so I'm going to make sure the pin is going down. So if for some reason a ring ding would disappear, you um, don't lose the rig. Luckily, the boats are under a fair amount of pressure, too, so you don't really have stuff that's loose to bounce around or bounce loose. I, me personally, would I would million dollar tape this um, because it's super thin but also slippery, and then um, you can keep everything together longer, especially like rigging right now for the season. So, I have tape. <laughs> Love million dollar tape. <laughs> So now we'll grab the other one, which is right here. Same thing, put the top in first. It's a key. You can actually, can you see how it's yellow? Yeah. That's Duralac, so that's a barrier, because this is aluminum and that's stainless. Right. Um, so some uh, reaction between them. Yep, so that tells you that the, um, you know, they're doing a good job with yep. quality control. It, Selden UK is pretty impressive, I've been there. It's a pretty cool facility, it's very new and super clean. Um, if you've ever been to Harkin here in the US, it's a lot like that, where you're super clean. And um, same thing here. Get that in there and capture. Don't lose it. As soon as you tighten this a little bit, it's not going to go anywhere. Put a little bit of pressure on it. Shoot the spreader up just a tad. Um, don't know how to measure a tad. And then just snug. Same thing here, we'll, we'll tighten that. That one already flipped around. Okay, so if you have a tight fitting, this one's pretty tight. You're gonna be doing this a lot. I, I just take a, what we, this is called a rat tail file, and just don't hit it too much, just kinda, you know, it's probably is that got squeezed just slightly, and you don't want to, see that's a little tight. So you just wanna get it cleaned up. So when you do it again, you can almost see it looks like it's bent right there. Sometimes it'll go in one way better than the other as well. So see there it's in, boom. So I didn't do too much. It won't get tighter. So there you go, you're on. All right. Looks like we need to move real quick. So I on a on any boat really I go from the outside in that way the sheet can't grab the ring ding. Mm -hmm. And then when I go on load and want to tape them, then I go up uh -oh. and then I tape it that way. For nice clearance against, for nice the clearance against that, easier to tape it so you're not yeah. taping low. Yeah. And that's how I put it on. So um, probably want to get this undone and bring this to the bottom. And these boats are super simple and easy. Make sure that you don't lose your pins. Now, would it be a good idea at this point just to kind of run your lines a little bit and make sure everything is straight in the... Yep. So that's good there. Um, the spinnaker halyard is uh, definitely one way you want to run because it's all the way at the top. Jib halyard right here. We'll run this. And these pins are not captive unless they changed them. And so that's uh, something to pay attention. Don't drop the pin. 
Um, I can sell you new pins, but I can't make a living selling pins. So, and then our halyard is here. Spin halyard. So, And I always, always tie a knot even if it's super long because these are really tight. So getting a new halyard in is difficult. If you look up here, with our spin halyard, this shiv is super small. So there's not a lot of room for to fish it through. Yeah. To fish it through. If you're going to do it, I'd whip a line here and connect a really small mouse to it. That's what I've had to do um, to replace one or something. And then you just tie it somewhere so we're ready to go up once we get the other shroud on. Um, this is your purchase system. This can stay the way it is for going up. These are all pretty loose with the blocks here. Um, these have balls on them so they don't get sucked in. These are just tails for your, um, for your halyards, for your main and your jib. So we'll get this side hooked up. sure everything's clear but until then so you put an S carabiner right here yep, instead right of there that way you can flip quick. it real quick yeah. and then this will go on quick with the, um, the bead on the bead right stay, here and this has been switched to a bead on the original ones it was a copper piece and this is much nicer so this just goes on like right. that and uh, should be good. That's, I mean, that's what it's meant for. So, um, what I'll probably do is keep this off until we get the rig up, and then <laughs> it's pretty simple to get the rig up, depending on who you are. Yeah. And then they set the pin for you. Just need to make sure it goes in like that, and then forward. And even if you're doing this by yourself, you can walk it forward, but if you have someone, they can pull that or get the I've got, I've got boat breaker. And then we just have the boat breaker attach it there, pull purchase on, and then this comes around the bottom side. And this will go into the middle because your jib will go to the back one and your front one is four stay. So then this is actually pretty important too because your tack line's always gonna come out the, the, the port side of the boat. So what you wanna do is so have your pin on, the have your pin on that side of the boat on the port side. because then your ring digs on this side. So you lower the risk of catching it with your lines. Exactly. And you wanna tape it as well, which is a little hard to do, but you can do it. But then I put this up as well. So when you take the boat breaker off. So the deal with the boat breaker is basically it allows you to tension the forestay. You get the forestay or head stay connected, then you can release this. Very nice, so you don't have to adjust your side stays each time you can leave them tensioned. Exactly. Yep, and then you're good right there. So then you adjust your rig. Um, we're pretty light because we were all the way loose, but let me tune her up. So in in that mode, you you don't want to be as low. Right now you've got it just beyond the, the pinhole there. Yeah. So before you use the tensioner on the front, you want to give it a little more than that, right? Yeah. So we're not really that close. You put the tension on, it's probably not going to do anything. Okay. <laughs> so if I, if I pull the pin, and if there's tension on the pin, that just means it's it shifts to the side a little bit and the pin's doing its job. Uh, these actually have pluses and minuses on them. So um, one thing I didn't do is get that straight, but we can do that, switch that with the boat breaker later. Um, so I just hold the top and spin. Now what I would do the first time also, because you don't know if you're exact, is I'd, I'd, get, it, I'd get it to base on the front, and then I'd do the side to side bucket swing or something like that. Um, I try to put the, the the little dot in the same spot all the time, mm -hmm. but basically there, 
you know, we're a little bit snug. This can slide down, stays out of the way. You're good to go. And then you tighten the other side and just kind of work it back and forth um, till you get to your number on the four stay. So, so that's why you want to do the bucket thing no matter what. Or, you know, I say, I say the bucket thing. If you put weight on a halyard, it stays the same both sides. You switch it both sides. I mark to an actual fixed piece. So, like, I would go to the pin because the boat, you know, they could have sanded a little extra here or something. Yeah. Um, some people will take a tape measure and make a mark up here as well. Um, I don't think we need to with these, but if you go to the pin or say the bottom of the pin, and that's where your, your measurement is, and the measurement doesn't need to be numbers. It could just be a mark on a piece of tape on the bucket that both sides then are the same. And sometimes that's even easier. So you, you mark it on your, on your halyard with your bucket, and you just go side to side to make sure you're exact. Um, this is how we do, the gauge it goes on the front and so like now we're at we're actually at just under 14 so I tighten that one a little bit not crazy but I did tighten it a little bit so now I'll tighten this one um, so I think I'm similar to over there you don't have to put these on every time but now you look at the rig if I've done this and do it again, I just, I don't know, maybe it's me, I just take it off, put it back on, make sure you're seated in here really well, like perfect, and then pull again. Um, kind of play with the spring. So there we're at like, I call that 17 and a half. Um, so then what I would do is I'd just leave it at that, do your side to side, and then see where this ends up. And then what I would personally do is I'd go down to base, so 16, and then what I would do is I would count turns and I would go up two, check my numbers. I'd probably go up two more and leave it overnight. The next morning then check it again, go back to base and then maybe go sailing. Um, if you go sailing, you want to go sailing same day you rig the boat, that's not a problem either. Um, just that's going to help it actually. Mm -hmm. So you go sailing and then you just kind of do everything again. And I'd say, I've actually, with this, di with this uh, compact strand, you don't get much change. The first day I sailed my boat, brand new boat, right out of the box, um, it was blowing, like probably gusting to 25. I put it to 24 on this, which is the max number, and uh, went sailing. It was October cold, so I wasn't really thinking as much. I threw it on a lift, I went left. Next morning, I put the loose gauge on it, it was a 24. Wow. So it's it's actually, this material is very good, and that tells you a lot about the rig as well. So I think this boat, you know, it's a lot easier to just do it and go sailing. So a lot of times your boat's going to come with a sprit in, so you won't have to do this. Um, I think my sprit just wasn't in because the way I delivered the boats on this boat. Um, so you line it up with the this line here. Um, that's this line. Okay. Okay. So this is a little complicated because there's like not, not, not. And then we'll slide this one down. Actually, that doesn't need to really slide down much. Okay, so that just keeps it down. Mm -hmm. This one just keeps this to work. And so that, that that doesn't go away too far. So you just basically gotta ooch it that way. And then this will go to the um, spinnaker. So when the spinnaker starts to pull, this goes, see, right, leverage. And so that just stays there. Now this doesn't need to be that tight because when you hoist the spinnaker, it holds it like this. So this being too tight actually would just be um, pulling, it'd just be creating tension um, when it goes in and out. So if there's no load on it going in and out, it's pretty loose. That's just keeping that from popping off which would be hard to do as well, but 
So then when you pull, this would be the halyard goes through here. So you start to pull it, it'll go out. That's where you could probably, you know, McLube your, McLube your pull. It's only gonna go out as far as this too, this right here. So that's, that's safe. Um, the only way it could go further is if there was no tension on it, but this is gonna be attached to the spinnaker. So everything's good. So that's only gonna pull it as tight as that. So then you're good with that there. This is your tack line. So when your pole is attached there, this needs to be all the way back. And then this you can adjust. There's been some cool things where people just will adjust this um, with a just like a little purchase system, not really purchase, but lashing system. Um, but remember, we don't have the kite attached yet. Mm -hmm. So we just tie this tight, fairly tight. When you attach your kite, you'll lose some up here. But that's something you're gonna adjust as you go because the this line is stretchy. Now we do upgrade this to a piece of Dyneema. Lighter and heavier are gonna be different. You know, lighter, you're gonna need to let it breathe a little bit where heavier, you want as tight as possible. Um, so you'll be able to, you'd be able to adjust that a little bit. Actually. And then it'll come in on its own with the, um, dowsing line because it's, it's attached to this and so as the kite comes in this wants to come forward um, and just make sure this is not twisted here see how these blocks are this way because this doesn't twist this one does twist this one doesn't so see how that is mm -hmm. and then the spinnaker halyard will come through here and then that way now let's mount the front of the dowsing bag we're gonna stick it underneath this bar, the elastic goes underneath the front of the bow, bring it around, push it through the grommet, give it a figure eight knot here, nice and tight, all right, then what happens with this is this comes up and you just attach it to the Velcro along the top of this bar here. And then these Velcro strips come back and attach along the bag on the inside there. Right now the halyard goes through there, but some people don't put the halyard through there because you figure that's more tension. Abrasion. Yeah, more abrasion basically. But that does what it does do and what it's meant for is it would limit the spinnaker from coming back further, but mm -hmm. but so does the block. Mm -hmm. So then this just has a small bungee that normally goes Just, that just stays in place. It doesn't do more than that. New shivs, old shivs. These uh, literally just a knife would be easier or something. Just there's a little thing there. You just pop that out, just like that. That's just a little piece there. And then the pins here. So what I do is I get a little thing because there's a a hole there, but a capture. right there so that comes out so as you go back and you can see there's extra shivs in there that don't really do anything uh, let's make sure that's good And use the halyard as well to your advantage. If you don't remember having these other ones.
Okay, now you're back in. Two new shivs, this thing just clicks right in. Boom, done. And then you see this is where you're taking out, so it's just plastic. Um, problem is, is if you're hoisting, a lot of times here, you're pulling sideways and the shiv gets beat up. Okay. And that's why the top ones don't need to be changed out? Top one actually has a, has a bearing in it, okay. so that's fine. The front one, you're only replacing one, which is a spinnaker one, and that one's important because the spinnaker moves fast. So. All right, now let's put the tiller on. So obviously the tiller, you always want to make sure the tiller extension goes underneath the bridle, which is this guy. And you see these pins, the pins both need to pop down. It's a pintle and the gudgeon. He's popped down into the gudgeon. Then you've got this O-ring that you run through the bottom of the of the top pintle. This little guy, mine's a little bent up, but this little guy keeps the rudder. So the the thing about this setup is there is a catch here. You see this little lip. That lip allows the rudder to stay up if you're in shallow water or if you're trailering it uh, to, let's say you're running it by dolly and, and putting it in the water. When you want to then drop it into the water, you just lift up on the, the tiller and it drops back. Now, because of the, the ground, I can't lower it enough, but if it gets low enough when you're ready to sail, there's a hole here that corresponds with this hole and this plastic pin goes in that spot and locks the tiller down so that it doesn't accidentally kick up while you're in the middle of a race. So that's what that whole setup is. Now we're going to put the boom on. And then we're going to put the G-Nav on, which is basically an upside down Vang. Okay, we're gonna replace this this cleat, which is your spinnaker hydro cleat. It's plastic, so it's you know you burn through it pretty easily. So start pulling out the screws already, um, and the Harkin aluminum 468 will go on uh, right into there. So what I do, it has sealant there, but I put a little Tef gel also. Um, Tef gel is kind of sticky and will help it kind of Loctite-ish, but also fill the holes as well. Um, so these are tapped, so you're not worrying about a screw underneath, there's no way to get underneath. And uh, it's a little bit bigger base too. Um, so being a tad taller is good for cleating. 
make sure whenever you're putting any cleat on you're testing the cleat because if you if you go too tight the spring will get pinched and then the block won't work so I kind of tighten and, and do that and then the one other thing that I do and it's easier to do on the old one but as I bend this forward my knife actually kind of fits in here pretty well I bend that forward a little bit so it keeps the guide down keeps the line down and into the cleat and so uh, you're good to go there these are a little tight to get through to start but we put soft shackles on them they come with a lashing line but I usually get a little bit of line a little bitty line here I'm using a pigtail to get it through the first time because it's pretty tight there Actually, while you have it in, you might as well run it through. And then, soft shackle is nice because it's easy to tell when it's on. Then you're attached, and we can then pull off the pigtail. Then you have your block. Make sure you line it up with the arrow facing back for your spinnaker sheets for the ratcheting. The ratcheting, yeah, the ratcheting aspect. These are auto ratchets, uh, lighter lighter weight, only auto ratchets, which is good. And then you're soft shackled on, so you're not gonna have any hard spots. Yeah. So you can't really hear it until you have pressure on it. That's nice about the auto ratchet. Hmm. So in the light air, there's no load, it'll spin a lot better, better, and when you ease it out, it'll spin a lot better. That's really sweet. That's a nice upgrade. Yeah. Follow the path of the spinnaker halyard so it uh, in my case this is the the green line and it goes all the way up to the highest forward exit on the mast comes out of the the bottom of the mast right here you see the green coming out and then follow it forward up along the sprit and it comes up to this little assembly so you have a block and you want the, the spinnaker line to come from the mast to the inside of that rear block and to the outside, to the starboard edge of the, the block and then back to the stern. So we're going to now follow that green line back to the stern so you see it traces back along where it came out of the mast. It goes through this cleat which is what cleats when you pull the spinnaker up, when you raise the spinnaker, you cleat it there. It comes back through a running block along the thwart. And then uh, Eddie has recommended to run it uh, on the port side of the, of the uh, main sheet block and then back to the eye which is attached to a bungee that runs back to a block in the back and that gives it the ability to have a lot of a lot of play you see there's a lot of shock cord that plays into that so it can go travel quite a bit forward now we're going to walk around to the other side to the port side of the boat and now we'll follow it to uh, follow it forward so you can see it come out of that eye you can see that both sides of the spinnaker line uh, how you'd come up on this side of the block it goes under everything else you want it under your jib sheet your spinnaker sheets everything else um, that red is the vang ignore that because that will go wherever we want it uh, it goes through this block up to the uh, the dousing sock if you will it, uh, there's a difference of opinion as to whether to run it through this grommet here the grommet basically catches the spinnaker when you pull the spinnaker into the bag and blocks it there. Uh, the block, the pulley does the same thing, but uh, if you would prefer to have this grommet do the work, then you can run it through the grommet. Some people think the grommet might cause more wear, etc. Then the uh, spinnaker halyard or dousing line basically continues through the sock and out, and then 
it needs to come up to the outside of all the other lines. You want it on the outside of the jib lines. You want it on the outside of the spinnaker line. And then it'll go into this, the chute. And we'll, we'll do that in a second. What I do with the main sheet is I actually luggage tag it onto this block. Get the twists out. Get the twists out, get it. There we go. So now backwards through. And down and through the block. And down and through the block forward. And now you're going forward through this block. And then don't forget your yep. Keepers with the hanger here, and then don't forget this one. Come through here, and then this all oh, most blocks now have a, a guide, so you go forward through. I'm going to show you how to measure how you've set your bridle. You measure from the top of this stainless steel eye base and you measure to the bottom of the block here. So, uh, Eddie has uh, variously said that you want to be at 25.5. Right now I'm at 25, so I really could loosen this a half an inch, uh, the bridle. You want to make sure that you do it evenly so that the block isn't to one side or the other. So you want to make sure that as you adjust your sides that you make sure to adjust it uh, evenly. And the way, and you're, what you're basically doing is you're setting it so that when, uh, typically when you're, when you bring in your sheet, you want to be up about three inches off so that then you can bring it block to block if you need to tighten up and you can ease if you need to, to uh, adjust your twist. But generally what I try to do is when I have three inches um, block to block, then I want to have a reasonable amount of twist. And if I want to close the top of the sail up a little bit more, then I can go to block to block. If I want to spill a little more, I can ease it. Uh, the way that I would adjust this the way that I would adjust this is if I wanted to um, if I wanted to tighten it, then I would basically just shove this along like this. I can pull this and adjust it along. Now in my case, I have to loosen it, so I would go the opposite way. I'd pull it this way, but I'd have to undo these knots, which I don't want to do right now. But if I undid those knots, then I could come out the extra, uh, really quarter of an inch on each side in order to give me about an extra half inch um, vertical. And again, I want to make sure that I ease each side the same amount so that I'm 25.5 when measured in the center from the top of this stainless steel plate where the eye is and to the bottom of the plastic of the block. For the spinnaker sheets, you need to make sure that those go to the outside of the shrouds and then forward and to the front of the forestay. You de definitely don't want to have it go inside the forestay. That'll be a real problem when you're sailing. For the jib sheets, you've got two blocks. You want it to, I, I actually use a soft shackle to attach to the, uh, the jib. I think it makes it a little easier to move uh, the sail around and not have extra metal and extra weight. 
but uh, then the sheet you want to make sure that the the line running to the adjustable uh, track here goes to the outside and the running part that goes through the eye to the inside so when you're running your block make sure that they're lined up so that those are straight if you've got uh, ratchet blocks such as what we have here these are the upgraded Harkin ratchet outsides for the spinnaker and these are for the jib you need to make sure that it ratchets in the proper way it should resist you when you let it out it should not resist as you're pulling in and with these auto ratchets they won't actually feel like they're grabbing until you have some pressure on them so you have to make sure you put a little pressure against the block to cause it to give that ratcheting feeling so that you know you're going in the proper direction the cunningham is this yellow line or the downhaul is the yellow line that comes out to the port side of the uh, mast attachment, goes up through a grommet in the sail, and then will come down on the other side of the sail and comes down through this jam cleat. And then you can just tie a, a figure eight knot at the bottom to keep that. So that's the how the Cunningham works. The uh, Vang, which in this case is, I guess, called a G-nav because it's an upside-down Vang. It goes up to the mast and down to the boom rather than down below. It's got a, a block system, as you see, that runs across the top, and then it comes down along the mast to another block and then, uh, and then to a cleat. So I think the key thing here is if you don't keep this slot in the boom nicely McLubed or clean, etc., then your van can get harder to, to operate. But that's uh, the way that runs. So the, the blue on this side with a, a little hook, that hooks onto the jib halyard when you've got the jib raised. We can show that later. On the other side you'll have one for the main halyard. So that's this gray one here. Again that that hooks to the mainsail halyard when you've got the main raised. This is the outhaul. So the outhaul runs into a jam cleat up here in the front of the boom. That obviously runs through the boom and comes out of the back of the boom when you get the boat it, it'll look like that the right side of that will be basically tied in there uh, there are a couple ways of handling this with the outhaul grommet um, is you can either just tie it off straight to the grommet or what i did is i have this um, i have this little guy that i leave attached i have this tied here I have this attached and then I put a soft shackle on it so I can put the soft shackle through the uh, through the sail grommet and I like this methodology because I think it reduces friction here and uh, this makes it easy to attach to the sail so you know there are various ways of approaching this but that's the way I've done it I happen to use my main halyard just to hold my boom up when I've got my cover on so for the demonstration here that's what I'm doing again the rear drains are these two plates in my t case I've done a custom set out of uh, Delrin which is an engineered plastic and uh, laser engraved our team logo onto those and the way they work is they're basically bungeed they're bungeed in and so if you get a lot of water pressure they're able to give and let water out uh, and you can change the pressure by undoing this hook and releasing some of the pressure so that then they can be more sloppy if you've got a lot of water that you want to get out otherwise you can just leave this attached up here
like that. So I'm going to start by putting the spinnaker on. The main reason for that is that if I have the jib on, it's harder for you to see what I'm doing with the spinnaker. So the key part of putting on the spinnaker is making sure that you have the tack clue and head in the proper locations. The head of the sail is probably the easiest one to figure out. The The clue, obviously, is where you attach the sheets. And the tack is the part that goes toward the front of the boat. Now, the tack, it's pretty easy. Not only is it marked tack, but it also has the Sailmaker logo on it. So that's probably the easiest way to get that figured out. So the tack attaches to the front of the sprit, which is right here. And so you have this rope coming out of the end of the sprit. You basically just take your tack, run it through, and then you can create a bowline. All right, there I go. I have my bowline attached to the front. And so then this is hooked to the front of the tack. As the, as the uh, sprit comes out, then the tack will go forward with the sprit. So now I follow the blue leading edge, the left of the sail. I follow that up and I can get to the head. Now, the reason I'm following the blue to the head is to make sure I don't have a twist in the sail. I don't want it to be wrapped. So I get myself to the head of the sail. In this particular setup, I've got this arrangement that uh, Ed Furry put together for his spinnaker sheet upgrade. And it has a bit of a, a dog bone here. And so the, um, line goes through the head, the dog bone comes through, that it's got kind of a soft shackle splice up front here. He's got this donut on the back that basically protects it from the mast up there. I wanted to make sure that my halyard is free uh, from all the shrouds, so you make sure that that's straight. Okay, so now I've got the, the top. Now I can follow the red, which is the the back of the sail. Again, untwisting everything, and I've found the clue. Now the the spinnaker sheet needs to go around the outside of your shrouds. I use a uh, soft shackle, just as I think it lightens it up, and uh, I think find it easy to put on and off. So what I want to do is I want to get the other end, make sure that's also around the outside of the shroud. I want to make sure that these both go around the front of the forestay, or it'll be a real problem tacking. Now I've seen people with a little bit longer soft shackle. I don't know if that helps to feed the uh, spinnaker around the uh, forestay or not, but uh, probably not a bad idea. Now, I made a mistake when I did it this time, which is probably not a bad thing for me to show you. Um, I didn't go, I didn't, I went over the front of the uh, sprit line. So what would happen is when it was out there, the, the spinnaker would have to go out around the front of the spinnaker rather than around the front here because you need it to pass under this way. So. It, it's probably a good mistake for me to have made because it's something that you should remember to do is make sure that when you come through here you're in front of the forestay but go underneath underneath the bowsprit line and then hook yourself up to the clue. This is the sort of thing that uh, my crew Mark Landwer and I uh, before we go out sailing we often will try to make sure that we hoist once before we're committed to be out in the race and all. And we'll uh, make sure that everything is flowing properly because you definitely don't want it to go wrong after you've already uh, started and you're going down the race course. All right, so now we have one more step. So I go back to the foot of the sail. And now I've got 
the dousing line here. The dousing line comes up through the dousing bag here. Now the key thing with the dousing line is you want to make sure that it goes underneath your spinnaker, uh, your spinnaker sheets, and you want to make sure it's on the outside also of your jib sheets. Okay, so out to the outside of the foot of the sail, find your first grommet and go in. Then find your next next grommet up, and you come out. Then for your final grommet, you come from the front to the back. And then you can tie basically a figure eight back here to hold that in place. So we'll see with the kind of wind I have right here, we'll see if I can hoist this without a problem. Now, you always are launching from the port side of the boat. So you kind of want to always set up everything so that it easily flows out from the port side. Normally you'll be rounding your windward offset and flying your chute, so it makes sense that you would be, uh, breeze would be coming from your starboard and cutting across and filling from uh, the port side. So one of the things that Ed mentioned when we were putting on the force day is he put the pin on the, uh, he put the O-ring on the starboard side because as you're launching and dousing, you're doing a lot of traffic this way and you don't want it to drag on any of these pins because you'll tear your sail up. Now, normally if I were ready to go, I would tape this up also to keep that protected. All right, let's go ahead and, and launch. So if my, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and then we'll douse it and pull it up again so you can see how this would work. So now you can see how the dousing line came underneath the foot of the sail, in the first grommet, out the second grommet, in the third grommet, and then a, an eight knot on the end of the line there. The dousing line goes underneath the spinnaker sheet and is on the outside of the jib sheet as well. So now, if I'm ready to douse at the leeward mark, you would uncleat the, the spinnaker halyard. Of course, my wind is going to shift to make this harder. And I would pull the dousing line. Of course, it hooked on the dolly. You pull on the dousing line, which pulls the whole setup back into the dousing bag here and also pulls the sprit in. Now, let's say that we're, let's say that we're rounding the windward mark and we were going to fly the chute. Then you would do that by pulling on the spinnaker halyard like this. Normally I would have borne off to allow the spinnaker to fill. Let me do it more. And you can see how So that's how the spinnaker would work. Okay, now we're going to, to douse it again. So I pop the spinnaker halyard, I pull the dousing line, 
pulls it all back into that that dousing bag. I think it's a I think it's a really convenient system the way this works. Uh, everything is pretty convenient to manage. It's uh, pretty quick to get it, it up and down. Uh, I think it's a nice nice setup. I like it a lot. Now I'm going to put on the jib. So the jib shackle goes down here on the the hole on the bow plate furthest back because the four stays in the center and the bow line is on the front. All right, and then the jib mounts with these plastic clips. So you just put these around the four stay. So the jib halyard is on this side. If you're confused and you're, uh, let's say, a beginner, uh, beginner sailor, then you'll notice that the spinnaker halyard exits the mast the highest up on the front, on the, the bow side of the mast. The jib goes to the second highest, and you attach that to the head of the jib. Okay. Now I've got my jib sheets here. Now when I'm hooking this up, I've got a soft shackle, so these aren't hard connected to each other. So when I undo the soft shackle, these will be free from each other. When I go and set these up, when I'm hooking it up, I want to make sure that these lines run so that the the end of the jib sheet that ties off at the uh, the plate here the adjustable plate the track you want that to the outside the outside edge you want the running end that goes through the eyelet back to the block you want that inboard and so you just want to make sure that these blocks are lined up that way when you hook them to the jib i again like the soft shackle on on the jib clue because I just like the idea of not having another piece of hardware banging around up here. I don't like having all that weight up on the, I mean, it's obviously it's not a ton of weight, but it's unnecessary weight. These days with uh, Dyneema soft shackles, they're plenty strong and I've got extras around in case I were to have a problem. But you know, if you, if they start to wear out, you just replace them. Um, but I think they're a really nifty, great, great invention. Uh, really lightweight, not, doesn't bang around up here, no rattling, and uh, you know it's easier on your on your rigging and all that kind of thing. Um, so there, that's your jib setup. So now, if we're hoisting our our jib out of the bottom of your mast, will be these two thin leaders for your halyards. Um, this just allows it to run easier through the mast. So the thicker end comes out toward the actual sail. There's a thinner end that comes out of the bottom. So don't be surprised that it's a, a different look. In this case, it's a red. The red line is the uh, jib. So if I'm hoisting the jib, I pull on this. When the jib is up, you've got on each side, you've got these, these hooks and the one on the right side, on the starboard side, is for the jib, and it goes through the eye part of the, the halyard down here. And you just pull it in, you cleat this into the cam cleat here, and that's what sets your, your uh, jib tension there. So if I were to loosen that, it would, it would ease the jib tension along the forestay. If I crank it down, it would tighten it, and so you can adjust uh, the left of your sail with that.
lowering the jib then all I would do is I would uncleat this, unconnect, disconnect it from this clip, and then everything comes down like this. Now when, when you have both sails hoisted, there's a little pouch here on the uh, dousing bag. And what you're supposed to do is basically gather these halyards up and then store them here while you're sailing. So that's what that's what that's for. The M15 has a uh, loose footed main, so it doesn't slide entirely down the track. So you basically have what I'll call plastic lozenges, plastic lozenges that that slide in at certain points on the mast and on the boom. So for the main halyard, you attach it to the the head of the sail. And then you run the sail up the track right here. That's where the, the sail inserts into the track. But down here, you'll see that there are three of what I've been calling lozenges. Two of the lozenges and the access is right here. So two of them go down below that slot and one of them goes above the slot. And then the downhaul or the Cunningham comes through this grommet and then down through this jam cleat like that, and that's how your Cunningham is set up. Then an eight knot in the bottom there. So that's how it's set up. Now, it's always set up on the port side of the Vang, and that's uh, possibly because when you're coming off of the line, that means your sail is in its best shape when you're on your, uh, generally on a starboard coming off the line. Um, but that's the side that uh, you're supposed to bring the main up on. And then in the back to run the tack, you've got another lozenge and another slot here. So you basically just run this in. And then I like to attach my outhaul again with a soft shackle. I like to keep the weight down on the ends of the boat especially, but anytime I can avoid using hardware, I try, I try to do it. Um, but certainly you could be using just a regular shackle back here. Um, one recommendation was just tie the outhaul directly to the grommet and just come straight back to this block. Uh, I kind of like that it runs through this little eye and that's how my outhaul operates. So that's how you install the mainsail.